Yo, BJ Gador with the BJ Gador Podcast. I'm the former fitness director for the Men's Health Brand, and this is a continued conversation that was three plus hours with my good buddy, Jeremy Scott, of the Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast and app. Lives in Scottsdale, I live in Palm Springs. Fellow desert dwellers over 40 trying to stay fit and pass on the wisdom. But we also love basketball. The summer's a great time for the NBA. You've got, obviously, the finals. You've got the free agency time, the draft. Lots of great stuff has been happening this summer of 2024. We're going to discuss in the next episode here, this part of the episode, the Bronny James saga. Is it nepotism? The J.J. Redick hire for the Lakers. The Lakers in general, but also the NBA free agency and the kind of the shift that's happened uh, with the new CBA and even the Summer Olympics. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, two meat sticks, talking about hoops, and uh, all the stuff that happens in between. Maybe the best soap opera for men on TV is the Los Angeles Lakers. All right, guys. Peace. Obviously, uh, summertime is also good for... Uh, I mean, the NBA is a soap opera. I, I look at the NBA basically as the best soap opera for men that are into sports because, you know, they have the best free agency and off season. Like in football, like football obviously overtakes all sports in America in terms of like reach and audience, but it's pretty dead in the off season, right? Like there's, there isn't the same elements of like player movement. Um, so the off season, the NBA is always pretty exciting. They have summer league. I know you wanted to touch on, it's you know part of the benefit of uh, you know being a Lakers fan is even when they're shitty. That's why, like again, I'm a Midwest Lakers fan. I, I have to preface that I'm not I'm not a Lakers. I'm not like these other guys and gals. Okay, like I'm not entitled. We just won a title in 2020. I'm good. I I, I just I like to see them competitive. And the thing is, what's great about the franchise is even when they suck. In fact, sometimes. When they suck, they get the most attention. They're always in the conversation. Um, so, and unlike the Cowboys, they've actually won a lot of championships. Recent. Um, so, I don't know. There's a lot to talk about. There's uh, obviously the J.J. Redick hire. Um, we wanted to talk about maybe the worst NBA finals I've seen in, in memory. And then uh, the whole Bronny James nepotism conversation. So, uh, where, where do you want to kick it? Uh, yeah, I mean, the... The finals was by far the worst one that's I think <clears throat> like ever existed. Like I I can't I know somebody here like and I obviously I talk to humans quite a bit here, so I have conversations and like uh, it's painful at times, uh, but I do it and I'm like this is the worst finals I've ever watched. And this one kid was like, well, you know the the Lakers. Um, Iverson final where uh, Iverson basically had 50 in game one he won and then essentially this gets smoked the next four games I'm like that's a thousand times better than this bullshit I just watched I go it was Shaq and Kobe for one and Iverson and no offense like Luca Kyrie like it's all great but I, it's not amazing to watch and I'm not a Celtics fan like I don't really care for it and again I'm not like they're all great players they're all in the NBA they're super talented but and I'm not trying to bag on Tatum here, but it was the cringiest fucking like plagiarism tour of celebrating I've ever seen of like, let me just take, and again, respect dude, you're, you're a savage, like you're great, but copy everybody else's like celebration and just like mash it up into your own. It just makes me like dislike the Celtics. Even I was never a Celtics fan to begin with, you know, like Larry bird is Larry bird. And I get it that you won a million championships 5,000 years ago when there was four teams in the league and, and that's great, but I don't care to watch you guys. And then every game is a blowout. Like none of the games are competitive. It was just, it was the worst. I had way more fun watching like the Timberwolves, like obviously like, you know, play the nuggets or play anybody for that matter. So it just was very, it was a letdown for me for sure. The whole season was legit. And then I'm like, man, it's kind of a shitty finals. No, it, it was rough, man. Again, I think the Tatum example, like, I texted some friends. You just can't manufacture joy because it was an unimpeded championship. At every round on the opposing team, a, a star player was injured or out. Now, that's part of the game. Um, but it, it just kind of blows my mind that like people always like discount the bubble championship the Lakers had um, because 
it was it was done without fans in an isolation um versus like this, this was truly again uh boston was the best team from the beginning of the season to the end of the season record wise uh they have they're the best six top six players in the league in terms of lineup uh it's so deep like honestly i i think i mean i i think Przingis could be their best player if I'm just honest about it, um, he's obviously the hardest matchup of anyone on the, on the, on the roster. Uh, so, but, but I mean, you, that's why like Tatum was like, I like Kevin Garnett, like emotional. It was like, any of this, like that was, that was in the moment. It wasn't planned. Well, he and he played for, for he played for the Timberwolves for 500 years and they sucked for 498 of the years. He had two like decent teams, and the entire time he's there, goes to Boston and finally wins, like after being in the league for 20 years, and then obviously has this moment. It's not a knock on Tatum. Bro, you've been to like 10 finals or like 10 Eastern Conference finals, and you've been in the league for 10 years. Like the kid is – he's he's 12 years old. Like he's literally been – like how many playoff games has he played at 25? Like a million. Like you just got into a great situation and a great team, and it's like – it's not the same for you when you say it because it's like, okay, cool. Like you, and I'm not trying to knock him, but like KG's was real because like he ate shit for so long. It's like you, you that's the difference where you see it and it's like, now I got to watch this shit. And then like, and because like I do watch Dave Portnoy's uh, pizza reviews on Barstool, um, and he's a diehard Celtics fan. So now I got to hear, see all that bullshit too. And so I'm just watching this like, kind of the rich get richer. And I'm like, I just, it would have been better if like the Mavericks could have won, like, because. They historically don't win. They won once, like this miracle championship. And I'm like, it would have been better for me to, to not see this. But the entire thing was just a, a shit show. Yeah, look, a championship is a championship, and injuries are part of it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, his his overall, like like you said, the plagiarism tour, um, it, it really looked like manufacturing the joy of winning a championship because it's like, wait, this is it? Because he wanted it so bad in the previous times when there was actually like true opposition competition. Um, and even getting back to what we were talking about too earlier, just about the impact of just even five or ten pounds. Obviously, Luca was injured, he had a bad wheel the whole the whole playoffs. But like I texted you, I think he's got to go low carb for the summer. You know, it's like that dude has to take 20 pounds off his frame and uh and just get his cardio it's a whole new level because it once he does that uh it, it's likely game over well because they just i think i just because they just lost right um the other day they lost to greece i think um for the olympic uh stuff yeah. and uh i think the stat was on there like how many games he's played in the last 11 months there's a, some crazy number it was like 100 and like 12 or 13 basketball games which is for people who don't know it's fucking insane by the way uh, that your body, I couldn't even imagine. I probably played the most in a year, like like legit games, thirty some, like probably thirty five maybe. And I just remember my body. In this, I'm I'm a young kid. I'm you know, and I weigh two pounds. I felt like just a bag of shit. Two weeks after the season, I'm fucking reverse dunk, like dunking off my right leg, like doing shit that I couldn't do three weeks ago just from the rest you have alone. So this dude weighs whatever he weighs two fucking 40. I don't know. He's a big dude. And to play that many games, it's, and again, he's a young guy and I just don't think you can go that long weighing that much with that weight is not, it's not LeBron weight. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like LeBron is, oh. has this frame of he's wide, but he's not, he's not deep. Like he's not, you know what I'm saying? Like where there's Luca no is just, yeah, there's no Luca is, not not a lean dude and a lot of that weight is not helping you and is not necessary like especially the way that he plays like if you're Jokic, it's probably a little different he runs half a mile an hour and he just barely has to move and it's like he he's not a point guard like luca is doing so you're it's so much work the entire game so every step you take every time you jump with 20 30 extra pounds like I should have wear you down over time. And so, of course, you're going to have, like, nagging injuries that are going to stack up, especially when you're 25. What will happen when you're 30? Like, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, no, that's that's what – it's a Zion example as well. And I, I hope he does because, again, I really thought 
uh, I thought it would have been a different finals if he was just in shape, uninjured. Uh, but regardless, I mean, you know, it's not like Boston's going to be going anywhere. They just signed – well, they have a billion-dollar roster now <laughs> based on the, the signings in the offseason. So um, – and, and they've also, I, I think – it's my opinion. I, I prefer the way the NBA was. It's not just nostalgia. I, I, I think I prefer super teams. Frankly, I, I don't. I don't like how it's like they're trying to make like like it's the NCAA tournament where anybody can win any given night. It's just it's too too stressful, bro. Like, you, like in the West right now, there's like 20 playoff teams. It's crazy. You know saying, like, there's only 15 teams allowed. There's 20 playoff teams. Um, but. So yeah, I, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see what they do. But what about uh, what do you think about the the JJ hire? I mean, I like him. Like I, I I'm not like a I'm like a I'm not a Duke fan, but you'd watch him because they just historically. I don't watch college the way like I used to anymore. Uh, it's it's hard. It's just a the 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 conference changing is. This could be a whole podcast together, like. Dude, Washington is in the Big Ten. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, Washington, Washington is gonna play Rutgers on a Tuesday night in a in a college game. Like, what is the girls' soccer team doing? Like, the, like I just think of shit like that now, where it's like Oregon is in the Big Ten. Like, okay, and ASU is in the Big Twelve. Like, it's just it's hard to keep track. The kids change schools every ten minutes, so it's like, oh, it's senior night, but these guys have played here for five minutes, so. I don't watch it like I used to at all. But back in the day, like I would follow college football and basketball like religiously. So all the Duke teams from shit, probably Hurley, Leitner, Grant Hill, all the way through, like until like probably till like shortly after I was done, like 2005, six, seven, I'd watch him. So Reddick was the dude. Like he's a McDonald's All American. Like he could fucking shoot and like he would be relatable because he's a white guy and I'm a white guy. And he's like, not super athletic and i'm like as athletic as i can be you know it's all comparable right to, to the guys you play with like i'm an athlete to like the fucking dudes i hang out with here but compared to like some of the dudes i played with fuck no dude like they're doing savage shit i could never do i'm like oh here's a white guy who can crush and i'm a white guy so like there was this relatability and i was always a fan of him and in the nba he had a good career for what it was like i think he was better than i thought he would be because typically you know six four white dudes who can't really jump don't play that long in the nba even if you're a specialty player uh, and again, I, I like him as an announcer, as a coach, I would bet my entire life savings. Like it doesn't make it to four years. I would bet everything I fucking own in the world. Right. He doesn't make, I just, I don't, I don't just mean him. I just think anybody, I don't care who the fuck it is. I don't think there's a human you could have hired like that would make it the next four years and they're going to keep him. They'll be super happy with him. He won't get crushed or get fired in, in four years. This feels like a. Unless they just get stop giving a fuck, which the Lakers don't do that, and they're just to become real. They they fire people for no almost no reason, or like because somebody doesn't. I don't know. It just seems like it's an impossible job. So I mean, you have to take it, I guess, because it's like, when is it going to ever come around to you again? But I think it's tough because the expectations are always like, we need to win championships and be great, but you guys need so many pieces to be awesome. So I think it's like, and it's just a, it's like. It, it's a it's like a TMZ shit show. Like it's every day is going to be about the Lakers, whether they win or they lose or they play bad. It's like everything is the end of the world, and it's like well, there's 82 games, bro. Like chill the fuck out. Yeah, no, they do. They do take it to a whole new level. And again, as someone who watched literally every game, including preseason, um, I can just I, I can testify to the fact that their previous coach was problematic. I mean, really questionable lineup choices uh he would he'd wait people would go on a 21 to nothing run before he'd call a timeout literally every coach in the league after two or three consecutive scores you, you call a timeout you reset especially in this league like you can get ran out of the building within a couple minutes especially at the end of quarters against good teams um just he was just slow to react and again it's also just once you lose a locker room you know, like that, that's the thing. Like once you lose the locker room, it's over. And so I think from the standpoint of um, was it a good hire? I think based on all the available candidates, worst case scenario, um, it's like I said, it's the best 
male soap opera on TV. He's done in a year, and then they get rid of Palink and then revamp the front office because obviously the front office has some questions too. Best case, he he does usher in a new era for the team. You know, um, he's just young enough. Like re, he he retired a couple of years ago. I think he's got a better uh, vibe on what it what the current players like are looking for and what they need. He's going to bring. I mean, has he ever failed at anything he's done? No, I mean he's obviously he's you know, from a young kid till now, like he's won pretty much everywhere. Like the NBA stuff, no, but like talent wise for what he has, yeah, it's been great. It just would be tough to it's the whole, you know, Le GM thing. Like LeBron's really the coach, bro. Like I just would it would just suck, dude, because it's like you're the coach, but like you're not really the coach. And like you're making calls, but LeBron's like, no, nah. because I could just you can't change how you are, you know? And I'm sure Jordan like would listen to Phil, you know, as much as he would listen to Phil, but it's you're at some point, like Jordan's just Jordan. He's gonna be like, you know, Phil, super cool. Fuck you. I'm gonna do Michael Jordan shit. And sometimes I think that would just be what Phil would say. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, we're gonna do this, but Michael's just gonna do Michael shit. And as long as JJ is but LeBron's not that dude anymore. Like he's still fucking great, but you're not and it's hard to we all come to grips with that. Like I'm not like in everything in life, dude. Like when I go play basketball, I'm not, it's been a long fucking time since I was that guy. And there's this sl slow reality that creeps in your head of like, well, I can still do this, but I'm not that version of that anymore. And what do you do when LeBron just gets pissed? And like, cause LeBron like would scream at the coach at least last year. Like he would do it all. He just, but it's what he does. So like your, your friends, like JJ and him are friends, but now LeBron's like screaming at you except it's not like in a private gym, it's on fucking ESPN and it's in front of, you know, 20,000 people in an arena. Like that's a, it just, it's a weird dynamic, man. It would just be tough. And then, then the players are like, well, who really, who's the coach? Is LeBron the coach? Is JJ the coach? Like, I know they don't think that I go, but uh, they kind, I mean, people kind of, that's what I think anyway, at least from the outside. Well, it was, it was AD that really, you know, his comments after one of the Denver games where we don't know what we're doing on either side of the floor, that was – because, like, he is their best player right now, without a doubt. He's their best two-way player. That's um, a death sentence when he said that. It was over. Yeah, no, yeah exactly. But but I think that was – it was a team-wide sentiment. This wasn't just uh, LeBron getting uh, a coach fired because they didn't connect. He didn't connect with anyone in the locker room. And uh, we get – like, I have Spectrum here, so we get all the backstage Lakers stuff and – I'm, I'm, they show some of the practices and Darvin Ham's just in the back with his hands in his pockets. And LeBron is literally coaching the team out on the floor. So, look, man, like he seems like an awesome guy. I think it's great that he's back in Milwaukee as an assistant and I'm sure he'll get another head coach and opportunity down the road, but um, <clears throat> you want to be a Lakers head coach. You got to be, you got to be, you want to be, you got to be a face, you know, you got to be, a communicator, you got to be able to handle the press. Your answer to every post game isn't we have to play harder. There has to be some strategy. You got to call some fucking timeouts. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta so coach. there's got to be some in game adjustments at halftime. Um, so, you know, I, I think the crazy thing about it too is very likely in the beginning of the season, they might go on like a three to five game losing streak and his, his job might be on the line. So again, the reality is, I think he's going to get more beliefs just because Palinka is all about self-preservation. So if he, like he can't afford for the JJ Redick experiment to not go well, this is going to be his fourth coach in six years. So it's going to he's as much on the line as Redick. So it's going to be fascinating, man. But I, I will say, um, the, the other complaint too was that the players didn't feel Ham came prepared. He wasn't doing the, the preparation, uh, you know, for each game. And I don't think that's going to be the case with Reddick. Reddick, Reddick is a OCD, um, like he's going to live it, breathe it. Um, they've already rounded. They've got pretty good uh, assistant coach roster now of head coaches to help him out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fascinating. Again, that's the same. Like this is like people don't understand. Well, they do, but like this is entertainment. It's a business. It's about making money. Uh, I, I think it was a good move from that standpoint. And 
they're they're a better team than they're getting credit for. It's 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 a pretty solid roster. They got to the Western Conference Finals a year ago um, with with the same roster. Denver just Denver is a that's that's one thing about uh, basketball and the NBA. It is a lot like boxing, the styles piece of it, like a matchup suit or everything. Yeah, I, I think the Lakers could have could have gone easy Western Conference Finals had they not ran into Denver, but unfortunately that was just that was the draw. And uh, so I don't know. I mean, obviously the the, the latest piece is and th- this is so multi tier too, and I've got a lot of thoughts. I know you do too. The whole uh, you know they did. I, I I still didn't think it actually was going to happen, but it has. They, they drafted Bronny James at fifty five. Um, I've got my thoughts. I'll let you kick it off with because uh, this is this is just such a. It's so polarizing. It's like I mean, very serious, a nineteen year old kid whose heart stopped a year ago. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, end of the day, like nepotism has existed in the NBA um, at every level forever. Uh, this is not a new thing at all. There's a lot of kids who got into the league and could stay in the league, like and get coaching jobs and front office jobs and even like play in the league longer because their dad did and whatever. And like, that's just, that's life, dude. That's every fucking corporation. And I mean, it's, it's who, you know, it's that's sometimes just is the game, bro. Uh, I'm not saying he's not good. Uh, the college thing is tough because like you watch guys on USC average, you know, 17 a game and he averages four a game and, they don't get drafted and he gets drafted, but that's the NBA is a lot of it's off potential and in different shit like that. And it didn't, and then they, it is a business. And if you can put asses in the seats, like that's what matters. It's, I always go back to the UFC dude is, you know, prime Connor is one of the best fighters you'll ever see in the world. Connor of the last five years is not that guy. Connor today. I don't know if, if he ever fights again, but if he does, it's the biggest fucking draw that's ever fucking existed. And is he a top contender at 55 or 70? Fuck no. But he sells more tickets than everyone, and it's not even close, dude. So, like, that's that's a, you can't discount that stuff. And I'm not saying Bronny does that. I go, but his dad does that. And them together is a, it's the, the shittier version of Ken Griffey Jr. And, and Ken Griffey Sr. The difference was is that Griffey Jr. was fucking the shit. And the dad was just like hanging on and Brownie's not Ken Griffey Jr. So do I think he gets drafted there if his dad is not LeBron? No, absolutely not. Like, no, you, you took, I always tell people if you took off and you can't do this, but if you just took off the faces and the names and the jerseys and you just shared the stats and you could watch them play, you would, there's no fucking way dude. like that. That's the test I would always give you. If you, if LeBron put on like, if he could do like white face or something, right? Like he just like became a white guy and you saw me like this dude belongs in the fucking, because he just, it just moves different. Like everything is different. If you saw Brownie, you'd be like, oh, he's good, but he's not the NBA. Again, I'll go back to the Ali Mo from the N one tour quote, like, and they asked him like, Hey man, are you mad? You're on the N one tour, not in the NBA. He's like, the NBA is hard. He's like, the NBA is hard. Dude. He's like, I'm happy just that I'm able to do this. And, that's how I think of it is like of all like, there's been 5,000 dudes to ever play in the league ever in the history of time, 5,000 guys. And now you're one of them. It's just, there's so many good dudes that are out there that are not in the league. So, but Hey, like if he, if he does what he's supposed to do, like he'll make the team and he'll, I guess he already signed a deal. So he's going to be on the team, but it's a, it's tough for him. He's 19 years old. You, you had a heart issue. Your dad's fucking LeBron. And so every time you check into the game, bro, people are looking to just hot plate the shit out of you. And it's like, you're going to have, it's, you're just going to get cooked. Like if you can't do it, it's, it's, it's really hard. I would imagine like for him to, he checks in and it's like, oh, you're checking fucking Drew Holiday. Fuck nightmare, bro. Like it's a tough, I'm happy for him, but it's a tough place to be. Cause it's like, if you've ever played sports, especially basketball, cause it's a more intimate thing. It's you're, you're there with the dude. And it, you clearly can tell when someone is better than you. Like, and now you're playing against 30 year old men that are really fucking good, bigger, stronger, faster, more talented. The footwork. It's just like, I couldn't imagine, dude, I'm playing in a game and I get switched on fucking DeMar DeRozan and I'm 15 feet from the basket. And I'm like, oh, barbecue chicken, dude. Like, it's like, it's, you're not even there. So it'll be, it'll be interesting, but. Uh, it's uh, the NBA is going to be tough, dude. Especially for him, he's got a target on his back every night. That's a 
that's a tough and you're on the Lakers like th there's so much he has all the Le not the the same hype as LeBron but you're getting all of the attention that he got except you don't have the one thing LeBron has like this once in a fucking not a lifetime once in forever freak show athletic all the tools and you just don't have the tools so <clears throat> I'm in agreement with almost everything you said I mean look here's the reality um I think if you ask anyone again, you, you got to be honest with yourself too about this, right? So you have a, you have a kid, and you could use your influence to ensure your kid got a, a good opportunity. And by the way, like it's not like this guy is trash. No, he's good. He's great. He had a forty-one inch vertical. He shot nineteen out of twenty-five on three pointers. At the, I mean, he had a really good combine. Um, he was a top thirty. Uh, you know, uh, scouted out, out of high school. And again, like he didn't just have a heart issue. His heart stopped. It's going to take you a full year to kind of recover, not just physically, mentally, like to be able to feel comfortable pushing yourself, um, you know, to that point. And yeah, he is undersized. But I always go, I mean, look, even if he doesn't get one of those like Dennis Rodman growth spurts where like Dennis Rodman's like 22 and six feet and he grows eight inches over a summer and becomes like, <laughs> like out of nowhere, one of the the greatest defensive players uh, to ever play in the NBA. I, I think he might grow a little bit yet. Number one, number two, uh, he's a freakish athlete. This guy is, you know, he's out there doing between the leg dunks at six one. Um, incredible bounce. Um, defensively, he, he. I don't think he. Uh, he's got a very high ceiling defensively. Like I, I watched him play yesterday, the first summer league game, and you know he's still it. Like when you go to the next level, you have to have good feet. You know what I'm saying? Like you can get away with crossing your feet and being more upright in high school, even college. But like even get to the G League level, you got to have a wide base. You got to move your feet. You can't let them cross. Um, once he gets like those movement mechanics down, and if he adds, like, like what happens if he grows a couple inches? And by the way, I think it's a realistic plan. It's that's that's part of it too. Is like you mentioned, the college game is just it's kind of a disaster. Like, and if you really know you want to play basketball, I'm not I'm like, I'm not anti-education, but the reality is going to the G league is a better way to develop your basketball game than to have to go to school, deal with kids, uh, the academic piece, all that stuff like this. You can really focus on this and you're playing against higher level competition. Um, so if he, if he does that route in two to four years, grows um like again he's a baby he's a 19 year old um so to me it's like a it's like a, a like a baseball investment you know you, you're you getting these guys super young and um so again but uh, by the way like if it doesn't work out he's going to be humiliated so this other side of the coin it's not it's not like this is a risk-free proposition he did secure an eight million dollar bag but he was a millionaire from the, the licensing stuff already beyond yeah, the fact that his dad's a what billionaire. Is, but what's eight million bucks to your dad who's a billion dollars? You know what I'm saying? Like even yeah. if your dad's a cheap ass, like he's gonna throw you 20 million just for the fuck of it. I mean, like what what would you do if it was your son? Would you not secure uh because again it's, it's, it's a great story? It's a great story too. And the Lakers, again, they the reason they're always part of the conversation is they always have seem seemingly have the best stories in the league. Um, but um yeah, I mean, sideways for sure. Selfishly, like it's your again, you're you're LeBron. Like so, you're now a a year. You've been a one name person for the longest time. So th I always say that if you're a one name person, there's a certain amount of like ego that you have that will never go away. You know, like you're it, fucking Jordan's not even MJ. You're just initials. You know what I'm saying? Like you're. It's a different thing. And so with that, like, well, yeah, my kid now plays in the NBA. So I'm the first dude ever. Like, that's what – for him selfishly, like, that, whether he says it or not, I'm sure he has, like, that's a huge thing he wanted to do, to become that guy. Like, this is a legacy thing. I'm going to put it in here. Uh, and if it's your kid, yeah, bro, it's what you do. Like, if, if you had a kid, dude, and he could work for you and he could fucking do fitness for a living and make a shit ton of money, like, you would probably – I mean, you would tell him not to do this life, obviously. But if we did something that was more fun – um, you for surely would do it. You would give them an opportunity. Well, especially if they want to do it, 
they're like, hey, you know, if I if I had a fucking kid and he's like, I want to do fitness, I'd be like, you're fucking nuts, dude. They're AI bots are going to do all this in five years, so stop doing this shit. I go, but if if I could get set him up somewhere and do something, I for surely would do that. Just like I'm sure my dad would have done it for me if if he could have done the same thing. But to your point, if it doesn't work, that sucks, dude, because you're you can't like most kids, dude. You're 19. I I couldn't imagine. Dude, I'm not that smart now. At 19, dude, I was a fucking dummy. And I could make a lot of mistakes and I could fuck up a lot of stuff in my life and no one would really notice and no one would really see it. And so I couldn't imagine you're having to become a man and do that on a public stage in front of all your peers and in front of the entire world, essentially. And if you do suck, A, you have to mentally somehow climb out of that pit however you do yeah again it's perspective i go you're still you know millionaire and your dad's lebron whatever i go but you have to live in that shadow just like jordan's kids you know you got to go fuck one of your teammates you know <laughs> wives now and marry them and like you know what i'm saying like there's some weird shit that comes with that where you're never gonna no matter what he does it doesn't matter how good he is dude if he ends up being an nba all-star and you know he does whatever you're never going to be your dad like there's nothing you can do to get out of that shadow that's its own i couldn't imagine bro like how that would feel as a person like when you wake up and you're 19 you're like no matter what i do i will never be half as good as what my dad did half you won't score half the points you know like probably won't win half the championships like it's it's insanity like when you really think about like that's like you're Jordan's kids. Oh, my dad's Michael fucking Jordan. Oh, okay. Like no matter what I do, I suck. Like it would be a, I don't have, I never lived with that. And just thinking about it now would be, <laughs> would be real, real rough. My, my favorite meme of the whole thing was that uh, LeBron's new teammate came out of his nutsack. <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy. Like that's like, to me, like that's a crazy, it's insane, bro. Like to, there's a testament to him, like just how, He's a once and forever person, dude. It's it's crazy. And so I'm happy for him. I think it's cool. It's a cool thing. It's just there's a lot of pieces to that, man. The NBA is real tough. And it's it would just be hard to to have to fail publicly or even try to just to do well publicly. And there's really no privacy in your life whatsoever. Um, and there's really no, you know, everything again, his he's on ESPN's fucking Instagram and they're showing his first like points. You're the 55th drafted person. Like the guy who got drafted 50 is like, what the fuck, dude? Like I scored eight points and no one gives a shit about me. So there is that thing that you have to live with where every time you check in, people are going to be like, fuck you. You're only here because like your dad got you here. Like, and I'm sure he's going to LeBron prepped him for that. And he's used to that. But the whole thing is, it's cool to watch. It's entertaining for sure. And it's, uh, it's neat. Yeah, but it's definitely, it's definitely weird. I mean, the reality is most 50, something picks are out of the league and or never make it in the league so they never he, play a game they never play a game if he, if he makes the team um ends up ends up just getting an as a on the roster frankly or especially as a rotation player it's it's a success though again like you said again it's all about how you look at it right i think so saying all that is he better just to like do nothing no, I, I, dude, if I'm him and I love basketball, that's your dream. Like you, yeah. pre or, he's not bad. Like he's a pro. He, he meant, I mean, it might be an NBA pro, but he's a pro basketball player. No matter how you slice it. And he's practiced his entire life. He's freakishly athletic. He's had the best trainers, coaches, nutritionists. He's had the greatest environment. Like he's bred to, and he's, you know, this genetic from the freak of the freaks. So he's, he's obviously bred to do this. It's just, I look at, like even the Timberwolves, like they have, who is it? The fucking um, Iowa kid, Luke uh, Garza, whatever. He was a college national player of the year. He plays junk minutes. He's a, what is he, seven feet tall? He can shoot threes. He plays garbage minutes. He, imagine that. You're, I think he's seven feet. Someone can Google it, but he's real close if he's not seven. And he can shoot threes. And he plays trash minutes for the Timberwolves. Imagine some guy shows up to your lifetime league and he's seven feet tall and he can just bang threes. Like he would score a thousand points and you, he would be undefeated. He'd be the greatest of all time. That's how hard the league is. Like that's the standard. And it's only gotten more freaky and athletic and just, it's a crazy 
just to watch. So no, I, I think it's the right thing that he's doing. I think it's awesome that he's there. And, you know, if he can make it, they think it's getting into like getting drafted and that stuff might be kind of bullshit. Cause your dad got you to do it. But at the end of the day, like I'd like to believe like it's a meritocracy in the NBA and like, for the most part, there's there's some dudes who shouldn't be there, and they they should be out of the league. And there's other dudes that should be in the league, whether that's you know behavioral problems or there's like pain in the ass, like the, like a Michael Beasley type shit, where it's like, wow, well, we don't want to deal with Beasley, but should he been in the league longer? Fuck yeah, dude! Like he was killing people forever. But there's a lot of stuff that comes with him. If he shows up and you know he's not a problem, he's polite, he does the right things. Can we get this guy in the league? Sure. But overall, if you're good enough, they're gonna you're going to be there. And if you're not good enough, you're not going to be there. So that's kind of how I see it. So if he does make it, um, maybe would be pretty sick for sure. Yeah. It's, it, look, it's going to be fun to watch. And you know, what's interesting too, because <clears throat> I've got the Olympics coming up and you saw the USA team and I'm looking at USA team roster. And, you know, again, we, you and I grew up during the dream team who many consider the, the all the, the greatest team of all time. Um, but then, like you want, like if you actually look at the rosters, I'm, I, I, I just I'm thinking about this as we're doing this recording. Like, wow, does it, can you imagine that matchup? Like, I, I don't know who's going to start, but let's say um, it's LeBron, Steph, Embiid, Davis, Durant. I mean, like, and then what, what was the starting five on '92? It was Jordan, uh, Pippen. Was it? Magic, uh, Magic. Bar- Magic Barkley Robinson. I mean, how would that team go head to head? It's, I mean, the game is so different too. The only thing I would have loved, this is just in a perfect world. And this is what dudes do. We talk fantasy sports. That'll never happen. Just take Leitner off that fucking team and put Shaq on it, bro. Like e- even just to next level. So Leitner is never on there. And just oh, put Shaquille God. O'Neal on there, <clears throat> and just murder. You know, it's it, it it's different too because that team that wasn't the same Shaq. No, 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 it was, but he was still like rookie Shaq was awesome, but he wasn't yeah. he wasn't Lakers three peat Shaq uh, no. by any means. But also, that's what I'm saying. Like, like this is not prime LeBron by any means. It's not prime KD, honestly, either. And that wasn't prime Magic. It, what magic was already he was good but he's not that's not prime magic like some of those guys were not like in in it like in bird like bird wasn't still bird so i always like to go like if you could take the prime prime dudes versus prime dudes i will always go with like the jordan teams i just think you can give jordan a bag of shit and he'll make it work but uh it, it, it'd be tough too because again there's so much size like these dudes are so big now and they're so skilled and they can shoot at a clip that those guys aren't used to but also the game was different where if you're telling me you can't touch any of these dudes at all like you can't touch michael at all i I just don't he's just a problem for everybody like it's not about like they'll say like oh you know like lebron's bigger and than michael and this i go you gotta understand this fucking dude averaged 37 points a game when you could basically punch people in the face like what are we talking about like insanity bro like it's just it's insane to watch, and I guess I couldn't imagine them in these rules and those guys in those rules. Like it would just be a. That's why I say people, it's a different ball game. Like, like no, and I love Luca. Luca cries, dude, forty five times a game. It actually takes away from how great he is because he misses yeah, plays sure. on defense. In the nineties, that didn't happen. Like I'm not saying they didn't complain, but when they complained, it was legitimate. Like they got the shit kicked out. So many of those things were not even foul. So it's. It'd be. It, I would love to watch it for sure in a perfect world, but it'd be tough because, like, how do you how do you deal with Kevin Durant, bro? In 1992, like, it'd be like, who is this fucking alien on the court? Like, what what is he doing? I mean, Steph, dude, Steph Curry, uh, especially the way the international game is played, like with with you know, it's it's so much movement, and uh, I know it's going to be really fascinating. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching it. I mean, it's it's a really solid squad. Yeah, there's some guys past. There's always going to be guys past their prime on an Olympic team, and they're there more for leadership experience. Um, but it's a pretty it's a pretty solid squad, you know, because again, everyone on the roster can everyone can shoot threes in that starting lineup. Well, again, you don't have to play 40 minutes either. Like that's the the benefit of it is where like you can get, you know, 
is the best version of LeBron you're going to get for the 18 minutes he's going to play, which is probably perfect. It's the same thing. And again, if he's not doing great, you can always swap the dudes in and out. And everyone, they're just, they're big, man. They're just athletic. And like, again, if you can get Kawhi to like be healthy and he can play 20 minutes, like that's a fucking great option. So that's the benefit is like, you just have so many savages on one team.